Welcome back to the Core Dungeon Framework tutorial series. In this video, we will begin building the dungeon by customizing the materials on the project. As we change the project, the only folder that we'll actually need to change is the map folder. Other aspects of this are not necessary to change to build the dungeon. To ensure that we're only changing the map part of the object, we'll use the lock button to prevent any accidental changes to other parts of the project. Click the lock icon next to framework documentation, game settings, UI settings, and nav mesh to begin. You can also use the visibility icon next to UI settings to hide them in the editor. Notice that they will still be visible when you are previewing the game, but invisible when you are working on it. Open the map folder to begin changing the contents. To work on one aspect at a time, we will lock the environment folder, which contains the sky, can be customized later, and hide the dungeons, wall, lobby, and lock the kill zone. If you made the nav mesh visible in the previous step, unlock it now, change the visibility property to force off and lock it again. You should now have a empty project with just the ground visible. Keep in mind that if we press play, all of our project is still here and has not actually been deleted. We'll begin by selecting custom materials from the floor. The advantage of visibility, besides decreasing the amount that we have to look at, is that it allows us to do large selects without selecting other objects in the scene. You can use left click and drag to select an area of objects. You can also hold control to add more objects to the selected region and click them again to remove them. Let's select the entire floor and apply a material to it. To apply a material, you can search for the materials in core content and drag that onto the object, or you can select the material property here to change it. Notice that the floor tiles have two materials, a ceiling, which is the bottom part of the tile, and a floor, which is the top part. This allows you to create different appearances for different rooms that are stacked on top of each other. In this case, we'll add a dirt texture to the lobby and a rocky ground texture to the floor. If you're unable to change the texture by dragging and dropping, you can drag and drop to the material property inside of the properties window. Press play to see your lobby now with the dirt floor. Once we've finished with the ground, we can press the lock icon next to the ground to prevent selecting it in the future and restore the visibility to the wall. You can apply textures to the wall the same way that you did to the ground, or we can try substituting different meshes for all of the walls. Each of these uses the same mesh, the white box wall one. What this means is that you can select an area Press control to remove and control to add to select an area. And rather than changing the material, in the properties menu, find the mesh property. All of the castle tile set pieces are available in core content and can be substituted in using the mesh select menu. You can try different castle walls as well as substituting in different pieces for different areas. Some of these walls are different on each side, like Fantasy Castle Wall has an exterior and an interior side, whereas Fantasy Castle interior is the same on both sides. This will allow you to quickly customize your project. Some of the pieces may need to be resized. Press play to see the new walls of your fantasy castle. In the next video, we'll discuss how to change the pieces used in each of the dungeons to make a more complete dungeon.